blenders. Something that I have been doing over the past four months. Actually, I tried blenders once maybe last year. I tried for about a month and then I quit it because my M1 MacBook Pro, the 2020 version, was terribly slow. I mean, it can run the basic viewport task doing all of that, but when it comes to actually rendering the stuff, it becomes really slow and I can't do multitasking. After I buy the M1 Max, I decided to give Blender another try. And ever since then, I've been learning Blenders non-stop. I've created cool projects, developed some small models from for clients, from my own businesses. And I want to make this video to share with all of you my experience using the M1 Max doing Blender tasks. You know, it has been a while since I've followed up on Mac-related news, but what is surprising is that Mac sales, especially for the M1 series, for the M1 Max, the M1 Pro, has gone down very, very much, especially the high-end M1 Max as well. Mine is 64 gig of RAM, or four terabyte, and when I bought it, it was about two and a half grand. But right now, there are stores selling it for 2.2 grand, and it's such a great offer. You get four terabyte of storage and 64 gigabyte of RAM, and the M1 Max still works absolutely fine. I've been doing blenders on it. I've been doing different renders. I've been doing quite intensive multitasking while using blenders and it has been running completely fine. So it makes me wonder, you know, with the recent launch of the M2 or the M3, the M3 Max, do people really need to go spend five grand on a laptop just for the sole purpose of trying to learn new things like 3D modeling? If you are a professional making a lot of money from doing 3D work, then go for it. But if you are a beginner like me, I would say to just stick with the M1 Max, a very maxed out M1 Max for a considerable amount of money, but not crazy as to three, four or 5K, but 2.2 grand, that is a, a good investment to spend on a very expensive hobby that can make you a lot of money. And Blender is one of that. And that is why in this video, I want to recommend to all of you to, you know, go for the M1 Max if you want to go for uh, the Apple ecosystem, but you also want to learn Blenders, you don't want to use Windows. Then I would say the M1 Max is a good starting computer to really be productive at things while at the same time be efficient at 3D modeling. I've been using this beast of a computer to create stunning renders and having very minimal lag in the viewport display and with rendering all of those images, it worked completely fine. The only thing that is a bit different from the more expensive Mac, I would say is the render time. It can be reduced, of course, but I don't really care about that. I can wait. But what I care about is working in a viewport because that is what I'm going to spend a lot of my time in. I need a smooth experience. And the M1 Mac so far provided me with almost a lag-free experience doing things in a viewport display in Blenders. So that is why I don't really see myself investing in a new machine anytime soon. Even if I were to do Blender professionally, I don't think I will be investing in uh, the M2 or the M3 Max. Maybe the M4, the M5, let's see how it goes from there. But yeah, overall, doing Blenders on the M1 Max has been smooth and has been smooth as, at a very crucial point, which is the viewport display. Like I said earlier, I used to use the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro and it was slow, especially at the viewport display. It was really hard for me to do things. But this experience of mine proved that with Mac, you can certainly do blenders and you don't have to go crazy with your spending to make this a very efficient and effective hobby of your own. So yeah, guys, with that said, this video is a continuation from the last video regarding my resolutions and also what I've been doing for the past two or three months. And I will leave this video with one piece of advice, and that is the latest will not always be the greatest. If you're trying to get into something as a beginner, do not be too greedy with the tech that you want. Sometime, you can't just buy an M1 Max or even a normal M2 Pro. It would definitely be more than enough. And for me, I get the four terabyte version of the M1 Max because storage is something that I do not want to chip out on. I also do not want to carry an SSD. And if, if I were to buy the M2 or the M3 Max with four, you know, four terabyte of uh, storage and 64 gigabyte of RAM, it will cost me an arm and a leg. So I do not want that. And that is why I want to sort of share that kind of advice to you guys. Do not be too greedy with what you want and overspend on things you don't need. And hopefully that will be on your resolution list for 2024 and years to come. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It has been Sam coming back with different videos from now on. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks, goodbye and peace.